The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the October 8th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary week, and an extraordinary life. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time frame, we're recording this show earlier today. So if you're listening live, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Again, if you're listening in between eight and nine, you you can always send me an email to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So we begin the day 8.07. We'll take a look at what the... Uh, Futures markets are doing what happened overseas last night. So right now you can see futures are up just slightly. Each of the U.S. futures, the Dow is up 24 points, NASDAQ 20, uh, ES Mini's up four, and the Russell's up uh, six points. Uh, Russell's up the most, about three-tenths of a percent to the upside. Over in Asia and Australia last night, each of their markets closed higher. Uh, the biggest move higher was the Nikkei. Uh, the Nikkei actually gapped up last night, and it confirmed a buy the D point pattern. So that should continue to head higher. Um, if we take a look at gold, she's up four bucks right now. Silver's back a nickel. Lights be crude up 47 cents. Natural gas is up 10 pennies, trading out at 577. Copper's back just slightly. T bonds basically unchanged, trading out 158.09. U.S. dollar index. Now there's a 10 minute delay on my U.S. dollar index, but I've got it down about a nickel, trading out at 94.17. Still in a very bullish mode out here. So it is Jobs Friday, and that says that if there are going to be any fireworks, they should begin in about uh, 20, uh, 22 minutes at 8.30. So the good news is we'll be able to see at least what that first reaction is. There may be a second reactionary wave come uh, 9.30 when the cash market opens. And so the question, so let's go take a look around and we're kind of looking for tells out here. Are there any signals uh, right now to help us identify what the markets are doing? So first, let's take a look at what the big picture. And the big picture is really important. And so when I say the big picture, I'm going to take a look at our four equity future contracts. So those of you that listen to the show regularly, you've seen this chart out here. And it's really important to understand the market conditions that we're in. Are we in a bullish market, directionally speaking, a bearish market, directionally speaking, or are we in a consolidation market? And clearly, we are in a consolidation market for each of the four equity future contracts. So in consolidation markets, they are very, very tricky. The cool thing about a consolidation pattern is that once price breaks to the upside or the downside, you have a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. So what we know right now is that we're in a consolidation market. And that really sets up a ceiling to the top on any kind of move and a ceiling to the bottom, and a ceiling to the bottom, floor on the bottom out there. And of course, price can break through either of those, but really important to understand we're just simply in a consolidating market. If we take a look at our nine panel market update chart just to get a feel for what the what does some of these markets are telling us or signaling to us. You've got the ES Mini in the upper left-hand corner. It is right now trading above the top of its daily profile. It's at 43.87. Now, the ES Mini formed a Gartley buy pattern. Uh, I did it uh, several weeks ago, and that key support level, which has been tested and held, is the 42.93.75. So the ES Mini, what it needs to continue to move higher is it needs that next chart to the right of it, the spot volatilics, to close below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's currently printing at 1946. Price is trading at 1929. It's below it, but it's really going to be about the close. Yesterday, we saw the spot VIX trade below the 50-day uh, exponential moving average, but by day's end, it closed back above it. When the spot volatilics is above the 50-day exponential moving average, any surprises uh, to the downside can see some very swift moves out here. So watch 
watch the end of the day level uh, again, or maybe this is going to be important to you at the at 111 in the afternoon. Where's the spot volatile next trading? If it is above 1946, well, then that tells me that the uh, markets or the S&P have traded lower. It might be sideways to lower, but certainly typically not higher. And if the spot volatile is below 1946 uh, and price in the ES mini is above that 4387, the first target is going to be the prior swing point. That's out here from the trading day of September 27th, and that could easily take us to 4472. Boy, you get above that, you're back to the high. Highs. Not necessarily today, but uh, could be today, but you'd be back to the highs. I'm not calling that, by the way. We have to wait to see what the market communicates to us. And it's really all going to be about, well, really two things out here. You've got the spot volatility index inside the uh, – uh, that to watch in this 50-day exponential moving average and the NQ, which is traded into a bullish structured profile. So yesterday it got right up to resistance. If this is just a counter trend rally, that's where you would expect price to find resistance. 14,986. Now it is a, a bear structured profile. If price gets below 14,780 today, it should make a move back to the bottom of that profile at 14,470. If price can close above the top of that profile, it's at 14,986. Well, the uh, NQ formed a Gartley buy pattern two days ago when it generated this nice bullish hammer candle right at the bottom of that uh, daily profile support area. So we took a look at, by the way, we took a look at the four equity future contracts. Each of them have Gartley buy patterns that are in place. Each of those taking place during the what we've now entered the favorable seasonal cycle area. So the cool thing is, from an informational standpoint, if those lows get taken out, uh, well, one, it tells us that certainly the seasonal low is not in, but it may be telling us something more than that. But right now we go with the information that we have. The seasonal low is in because we have all four equity future contracts with buy signals and buy patterns. These confirmations of this will come with that spot volatility below the 50-day and the NQ being able to close above that 14, what did I say, 14,986, 14,986.65 to be exact. The U.S. dollar index, uh, nothing wrong with it. It's bullish. Price is above the top of its daily profile out here. Gold moving uh, just a tad higher. Uh, it has resistance. It has not been able to close above the top of its daily profile. And that's at 1768. And if it can, even if it can do that, it's got resistance at 1774 and 1790. Those are the bottoms. Oh, it's the bottom in the center of the uh, weekly profiles out there. Speaking of weekly profiles, the silver contract has generated a new bullish structured weekly profile. The key level that it needs to close above to suggest higher price, and by higher price I'm talking about 24.23, it needs to close above 22.82. 22.82 is the center of that bullish structured weekly profile. Granted, there's some other skirmishes that should or will take place at the 23.18, 23.64, and 24.11 area but closing above the center of a bullish structured weekly profile would be a positive outcome today to the downside silver has support at 2176 to the downside in gold the support level is 1734 if we take a look at light sweet crude you've got an a to b equals cd to the upside its price projection is 8076 this did generate a uh, there's a smaller A to B equal C to that I used to show out here, and that generated a sell the D point. That was the bearish reversal candle on October the 6th out here just a few days ago. But all price was able to do was push back, test the center of that profile. It's above the top of the profiles. In order to get truly bullish out here, you need to see light speed crew close above 79.78. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. We've got a couple of questions that have come in. We'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Hope you're ready. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The first stock request coming in from Hector and the fuel injector. Hector writes in a Steve-O. Good morning, early worm. Happy frost, frosty Foster's Friday. Nothing nothing bad about a Foster's beer, that's for sure. But that is uh, just a tad too early at 8.18 in the morning. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, DE, that is uh, John D. has been in the consolidation since February. However, is it looking like it's getting ready to go south or building cause to go north? And the answer there is it's uh, trying to go north. It generated a, a bottom signal yesterday. I'll put up the white background charts. It was a road momentum indicator bottom. Right now, we're just taking a look at the TAS market profile. So one of the other things that it did that's a positive move yesterday was a close back above the bottom of its daily profile. So you'd like to see two consecutive closes above that level. That is 343.62. So I've got a valid bottom out here inside of John Deere. Where should price head to? Well, the sellers are hanging out between 353.52 and 356.82. We also know that we take a look at the weekly set of profiles out here. The low from uh, yesterday was the bottom of that weekly profile. So another level of support. Let's pull over the white background charts, see what we have out here. And in the white background charts, we take a look at John Deere. Here you're gonna see it had the Rhodes momentum indicator signal triggered. Price yesterday was a gap to the upside. That is a bullish reversal candle. Yes, I know eventually maybe gaps get filled. You know, do all get skip. In any event, you've got a bullish message, and that should take price, Hector, up to the 353 to 356 level. Now, if price can close above 356, you're looking at a run to 387. That's coming from the daily time frame chart. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top, and what price did was it successfully pushed price back to support. The support level was the bottom of that daily profile. We discussed already how price has tested and rejected that level. Now, if price were to close below 329.74, that could signal a uh, run down to the 278 area out there. So your question was, is this looking to head north or south? Right now, yesterday, it gave you the north direction, but it's still got a battle between 353 and 356. So... Um, in any event, uh, that's what's going on with John Deere. We've got a caller on the line. Let's go out to California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Early in the morning, that is. I'm doing great, Steve. Good morning to you. Thank you. Thank you. So you wanted to take a look at the uh, Gold Miners ETF, the uh, GDX out there. Uh, tell me what you're doing and how I could best help you. I thought that we got a close above. There was a couple levels that you've given uh, previously. 
Yes. I thought one was around you know, 30, 20 something. I thought one would just get a close above, and there's another one around 31 and change. I just wanted you to go over those levels if you could. And then, if you don't mind, I'm in GFI, uh, okay. Gold Fields. If you yep. could take a look at that. Absolutely. So uh, let me get that going on one of my charts out here. So with regard to gold, the first numbers that Brett was referring to, 3028, that was the top of the daily profile. Now, this was a nice bullish structured profile. By the way, the GDX confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It did it right here, this candle on the trade. And I'll show you on the white background charts too, folks, on 930. And it did that. That was a bull sash candle. It had triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Now with prices closing above the top of its daily profile for two consecutive bars, 30 28 that then suggests run a run up to the bottom of its weekly profile that's the next resistance level from a profile standpoint and that's at 3171 specifically so those are the specific numbers that brent was looking for let's pull over the ch uh, chart for the gdx and here what you'll see is you'll see those roads momentum indicator signals triggered you'll see the bull sash candle and let me update this chart as well <laughs> it was also a td9 count bottom so brent where price should head to even though I gave you the bottom of that weekly profile, we're back to the daily time frame, which gave us the bottoming signal. And its next battleground is up at 31.56. That's the TD9 breakdown resistance level. If price can close above that, does not have to be today. That would be a big move today. But if price does close above that, that would give us a change in trend uh, signal out there. Uh, so any questions about the GDX uh, at this stage? No, I think that's it. I, I, you mentioned the numbers before. I just I didn't have them in front of me. Yep, absolutely. So let's go take a look at Goldfields. GFI is a ticker symbol out here. And uh, see if uh, this is also giving us a nice bottoming signal. Uh, it does. I see. I do see a gap to the upside. We'll have to go see what kind of pattern took place uh, back there. But price is above, regardless of whether it, it, it identified one of my bottoming patterns or not, price closed above the top of its daily profile. Uh, in a larger way than a GDX. So that's a very positive. That was at 833. That's the level you'd like to see price close. And uh, so this gives us a target of 959, which is the uh, bottom of its uh, day of its weekly profile. So let's pull over the uh, you only have the daily right now. But that's OK. Let's pull over the daily set of charts out here. Let's make sure these are properly populated. They are. So you know, I, I don't know. I don't really see one of my bottoming patterns, per se. Maybe there was an A to B equal CD to downside. I can see a junior one. But regardless of that, you've got the bullish messages out here on a uh, the daily basis. The real resistance zone is way up at 1052. So you're a ways away from being able to do that. But uh, so you got 959 and 1052 are the resistance levels out there. If I take a quick peek at the short term, 30-minute chart, do we see anything out here that Brent needs to be concerned with? I, I don't see anything at all. So GFI looks uh, really positive. Yeah, the one thing that I did kind of notice, and <clears throat> you could do it on your white background chart or, or the other. Yeah. On the daily chart, if you took the tops, I think it goes back to, I don't remember the exact date, but I think it's either June or July where it put in that top. And they connect the, the top, so they might have finally kind of poked its head above that downtrend, um, which would be a positive, and we'll see if it can keep doing that, but it's a start to something, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, uh, I think I might be able to put some, uh, some of my trend lines out here. On, yeah, I think I can. And so there's the trend line levels that, in essence, Brent is uh, talking about. And so on my charts, it shows it really prices right up against one trend line. But hey, a move above that would just simply be another bullish development, Brent. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. You have a great weekend. And I guess if you could maybe go over gold at some point, just in the different currencies and where we stand with that, I appreciate it. Absolutely, we'll do. Great weekend, hey, thanks as always. You take care. You, you, you do as well. And thanks so much for calling in early. That was Brent in Martinez, California. The next question coming in here by uh, email. Uh, we took care of Hector. Is uh, from David V. David writes in. Uh, so the ticker symbol. Let's first get this up on the screen. SLI is the ticker symbol, and uh, which I'm not familiar with, but uh, standard lithium. And is, I'm currently uh, looking at SLI. Do you think this stock can continue its current growth? Is it sustainable? What's your outlook for this particular company and what might an entry point look like, uh, Dave, in Grand Rapids? 
So, Dave, right now, here's what we know. We'll just simply take a look at profiles. If you're wondering where the battlegrounds are, they're at 875. 875 is the top of its bullish structure profile. If price can close above 790, 783, that's the center, then that's going to suggest a move up to 875. 803 is another resistance level, and that is its uh, top of its weekly profile. So those are some battleground areas. I'd write those down on a pad of paper. Our white background charts may have some additional battlegrounds to, to consider out here. And your question was, you know, is that you're looking for a bottom as soon as we can expand this chart out uh, or what's going on up at the top. So the very first thing that we see is I see a, a, a TD9 count top that took place on August 11th. And price tried to take that out back on September 29th, was unable to do that, generated bearish engulfing wave number seven, letter G. And price uh, tried getting below the bottom of its daily profile at 722, but it was for only one day. Right now, SLI is sitting at resistance, both the center of that bullish structure profile and its green oscillator and change line. Dave from Grand Rapids, when we get back from this break, we'll finish up taking a look at ticker symbol SLI. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. If you're listening at 1.30, thanks so much for doing that. We're recording this show today uh, between 8 and 9. We'll probably do the same thing on uh, next uh, Friday as well. Uh, so we're back to uh, Standard Lithium out here for Dave in Grand Rapids, who's looking for an entry point. And his question was, you know, is price uh, going to head higher out here? So as soon as I can get this uh, white chart here populated, don't know what the heck is going on. Um, must be the NSA in my system. Wow, this is really weird. What the heck? 
Let me try to open this up on a different screen. Wow, very weird. Let me try to open up a different panel. Well, folks, uh, this is the uh, craziest thing I've ever seen out here. Uh, let me, okay, let me, uh, okay, let me do this here. I've gotten it to open up another screen. Let's see if I can close it. My apology out here, but uh, to help answer, wow, really weird. So I'm going to turn my mouse on and off, my keyboard on and off, just see if I can reset that, if that will uh, do it. I have not had this technical issue before, so I'm not sure what the easy resolution is or what the heck is going on. But uh, so here, oh, it's 8.30. That's what's going on. We've got the jobs report date out. So let's go back and take a look at what's going on inside the markets here. It's a ton of information going through the system. Okay, good. I should have figured that out, but uh, I didn't. So now let's go take a look at it. So the initial movement that we've got here inside the Dow, boy, it looks like it's jumping everywhere. Uh, so right now, equity futures are still pointing a little bit north, uh, but they're bouncing around everywhere. But on my system, must be because I have everything clogged, it looks like it's frozen. So tons of data. I can hear the uh, fans on my uh, CPUs firing up. So it's trying to get all this information out here. A gold uh, has spiked higher, that's for sure. That's up 10 bucks right now. Um, my feed on the US dollar index is a 10 minute delay. So we can't pay attention to that to get any kind of a, a signal out here. Um, I'd say that the US equity futures markets are somewhat muted by whatever the jobs data was. Payrolls were up 194,000. My guess is that's probably well below uh, what uh, what folks were uh, looking for out here, but for what, what we want to do, you know, is try to anticipate, not anticipate, but understand what the markets are communicating to us. So let's see if things have maybe freed up just a tad uh, so that I can get this other chart out here for SLI on my screen. So let's try this one more time, but uh, I still hear those fans on my CPU all fired up. So they're, they're processing, they're churning all this data because of all these charts that I've got up on the uh, screen. So uh, we're going to try this one more time, and if we can't, we're just simply going to move on. I'll, I'll summarize SLI for you at this stage here, uh, Dave, and that is that price is up at a resistance level. There are TD9 count tops. I looked at it during the break. This has TD9 count tops on the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. And so that's a bit of caution, and price was struggling at its daily green oscillator and change line. So this could form an A to B equal CD to the downside. Don't know that it will or won't, but you want to see today's price action to see if it gives you any other signals out there. So I would just sit tight. Uh, your question was, do I see continued growth? If price takes out the uh, recent highs out here, then the answer is yes, because uh, when you take out those TD9 counts to the upside, you know, that is a positive development. So I hope that helps you out, Dave. Sorry that I had some technical problems here with the system. Maybe it'll uh, 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 unfreeze itself uh, during, the, uh, during the show here, and I'll be able to pull those charts over. Hector writes in, so Hector says, a radio show question number two, if given time, you've got it. Uh, yesterday you were looking at the VIX table. You noticed during the spring and early summer months that the readings are in the mid-20s. Is this a clue about the future? Um, thanks and have a great weekend. So with regard to the spot volatility index, Hector, I don't pay attention to whether it's at 20, at 10, at 30. Uh, what I pay attention to, as I think you know, is where's the spot volatility index trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average. And uh, what I would do, what I would suggest, Hector, um, if you go back to your chart and take it all the way back to 2007, 2009, really 2009 time period, you're going to see that spot volatility was up in the 50s, 50s, 60s or so forth. But when the spot volatility index began trading below the 50 day exponential moving average, which was probably like in the 40s or something back then, that's what gave the signal to the move to the upside. So for my purposes of what I do out here and using the spot volatility index is kind of like a wind meter. Are we going into the wind or do we have the wind at our back? And when the, when the spot politics is above the 50 day, we're going into the wind out there. Um, and that's really all that I want to know. As far as where is the spot politics trading right now, it's trading at 1947 and the 50 day expense moving average is at 1947. So we're neutral with regard to the wind is, is the wind has died down. But the wind is certainly going to pick up. And the question is, which side of that 50 day is the spot volatility is going to close come day's end out there? So, Victor, uh, uh, Hector, I hope that that uh, helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. We had a couple other requests. Uh, one was for J.P. Morgan. Uh, I certainly can get that fired up on my three time frame charts out here. So let's take a look at JPM. I feel like I'm uh, navigating in the blind or in the fog without being able to take a look at my other charts. So see how long it's taking just to populate the e-signal out here? That just tells you about this uh, pipe delay right now 
that I'm getting. So that's not really good. Man, that requires Stevie to, uh, so what are we going to do next? I tell you what we're going to do. We're not going to take a look at JPM until that gets populated. But we're also, oh, there we go. Perfect. So with regard to J.P. Morgan, here's what we know. Price closed is trading above or closed above the top of its daily profile yesterday. So that's a bullish signal out here. And a second close above 169.30 will uh, be another bullish signal. The XLF is uh, is very bullish out here. Uh, you've got the uh, weekly chart is above its weekly profile. So the monthly chart is closed above the monthly profile last week. So all of this looks good. In fact, J.P. Morgan, if we expand out the uh, monthly time frame chart, this has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside that should take it to 20. 305 237.36. That's over time. That's the current patterns that are in there. Now, we're going to try this again. Okay, so we can pull it over. Let's see if we hit this expand. Oh, beautiful thing out here. So on the daily basis, um, yesterday, so here's the issue now with regard to J.P. Morgan. And the issue is that yesterday was a test and rejection of a TD9 count top. That's why we needed to have these white background charts out here. So the level that J.P. Morgan needs to close above not to get its bullishness back, but to uh, tell you that you're, it's back in breakout mode. It's going to be 170.44. Now, the reason that I say that is we have a, we have a TD9 count top that's in place. And uh, yesterday, price closed below that threshold level, the high of the pattern. That was the uh, level that I gave you, 170.44. Price is above the top of its daily profile. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. So its signal is bullish to neutral out here. Support on any move back should be at the 166.60 level. So on the daily basis, J.P. Morgan is struggling a bit. If we take a look at the, uh, it has a resistance level. It has a battle that it needs to overcome. On the weekly basis, I don't see that. I don't see any kind of a topping signal at this stage here. So J.P. Morgan looks good, but it's got some battleground that it needs to take care of in order to continue that bullish message. But it is not bearish. That is not what Stevie is saying. Uh, let me see if I can pull back that SLI chart out here and. Uh, open this one up let's see if we have any luck do we have any luck there we go so on the luck here here you can see the td9 count top this is way back here in august that level has held if we take a look at the weekly chart you're going to see a td9 count top as well out here that was on this bar when i say this bar the bar following bar number nine uh so in the monthly chart out here you've got a td9 count top that appears to be forming this month so those are the reasons i say caution and you could could get an A to B equals CD to the downside. And it's this oscillator and change line that is giving us that signal. If price closes above that, then uh, you should see a run up to 875 out there. So Dave, I was glad that we were able to get to those charts. There was also a question to take a look at FANG. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the uh, FANG chart here momentarily. That's if I can get this puppy to close. Hmm. Well, the good news is we're going into a hard break. So Stevie will figure out how to do this. And uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at Fang and uh, we'll go start take a look at uh, the markets and uh, see how they are responding to the uh, jobs data. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, folks, 842 in the morning on Friday. We are recording this show earlier. We're taking a look at the, uh, so far, the market response over the last 12 minutes here to the uh, jobs data. Uh, you've got a mixed bag. We take a look at U.S. equity futures. Dow just down slightly, as is the Russell 2000. But the NASDAQ 100, which is the most important signal today, that is up 80 points. In a minute, we'll go take a look at what that means. Got silver up uh, 40 cents. That's a big move, nearly 2%. And gold up 17 bucks. That is its 1% move out here. The question was to take a look at FANG. And so as we take a look at Fang out here, we can see that you've got a brand new daily profile that formed yesterday. So your resistance level is 105.95. That's the battleground. If price can close above that, that would suggest uh, good news. But really where price needs to close above is the high from the trading day of October 5th. That is at 107.55. That is your TD9 count pattern. Let me pull over the uh, white background chart. You'll see it here momentarily. And so just simply a reason to just pause or cause. So you've got resistance to the top of the profile. You've got a valid TD9 count. What that really suggests on any move lower, price should test its oscillator and change line. That's at the 98.64 level. So that's the daily time frame chart. The weekly chart out here for FANG has a rose momentum indicator signal, uh, but that needs a bearish reversal candle out here. Not like to take up place today so longer term it looks good intermediate term I should say but daily you've got a bit of a battleground and that's the high from a couple of days ago in addition to that uh, daily profile that formed yesterday so I hope that helps you out with regard to Fang I believe we've gotten through everything inside the Tiger's Den all of the requests out there so that's a beautiful thing so now let's just really move over to Stevie's other sets of charts out here our eight panel charts let's go take a look at well before I do that just before I do that let me get the NQ fired up on uh, on that there we go i'm going to start i'll start with the es mini but first what we're going to do is just simply go to my market update charts out here because really this is the key and important level so i said the nq was responding well but what does that really mean well what you're looking for today is how does the nq deal with 14986 Price right now is 14.956 out there. If price can close above that, that is a bearish structure daily profile. That will be a that will add to the bullishness. So the NDX or the NQ, I should say, has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. And if price can close above that, that suggests a run back to its recent high or maybe its all-time high. The recent high, by the way, out here from September 27th in the 15.399 level. If that happens meaning to close above the top of its profile, and the spot volatility, which is currently trading below the 50-day exponential moving average. Those are bullish signals for the markets, and the ES Mini right now trading above the top of its daily profile. So that is a bullish outcome. With regard to gold, 
which is having gold and silver really having the biggest moves out here. You can see gold right now trying to get inside its weekly profile. So a positive development would be a close above 1774. A real positive development would be a close above 1790. In the case of silver, it has some battlegrounds. Those are the daily profile levels at 2318, 2364, 2411. Those could be just simply small skirmishes. The big skirm, but closing above, if it can close above 2282 today, that suggests a move up into the uh, 2423 level. So now we're going to move off of these charts, and we're going to go simply take a look at my eight background charts for multiple instruments out here. Again, just to get a feel for what is being communicated to us for multiple time frames. So now we begin with the ES Mini. What do we know so far? We know that the ES Mini last month generated a, uh, a Rhodes Momentum indicator top, but all price has been able to do is get back and test its green oscillator and change line. Folks, that is a bullish message out there. Price would need to close below that green oscillator and change line. That's at 42.92 to suggest something else. On a weekly basis out here, as we populate this, what do we have? Uh, price, uh, even in the pullback that we've seen uh, since the uh, September uh, 4th, 5th, whatever that day was, hasn't even been able to test its breakout level of 41.26. By the way, if the ES Mini were to head south and get below 42.93, 41.26 would be its price target. Now, in the ES Mini, out here. It's got that confirmed Gartley buy pattern. There's nothing else on the daily chart out here to really assist us. The real key level for the ES Mini today is not the top of its profile, not that that's not important, but it's really going to be its oscillator and change line, which is red at 43.71. If price closes below that, that could tell us about a revisit to 43.44 or 42.81 out here. Looking for other messages, I don't see any. Um, I will share with you that if you were to ask me on a rally, and you're still taking the approach that this is just a counter trend move. Where is it that price would really find resistance? Well, for me, that test of the ES Mini, let me uh, get this chart here a little bit cleaned up. Let me pull this back, is 4472.50. 4472.50 is a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. In fact, it's the only one on the four-hour time frame chart. And we can see that after this formed a nice TD9 count bottom back here at about 5 in the evening on September 20th, price ran right up and ran into that resistance level of 4472.50. So if you're asking me, where is the next resistance level? If price closes above all these areas uh, and, you, and you're interpreting that um, I'm only looking at the bullish side out here, there's one more level that the ES Mini would have to close above to give you the all clear and that we're going that we're in the favorable seasonal cycle which we know we're in and we're headed back to its highs and perhaps beyond that and that's 44.72.50 and the es mini is one that has the best pattern with regard to where that resistance level is so i'd write that down on your pad of paper out there uh is there any other information that we can take a look at on the es mini i don't know i'm having trouble closing that box out here none that i see so let's switch over and let's go from the es mini Let's go over to the NQ out here and just take a look at its multi time frames. We're trying to see if there's any kind of tells or information out here. So a number, let me just update these charts out here. So on a monthly basis, same kind of pattern out here. You've got a TD9 count top. Price has just simply been testing that green oscillator and change line. That's where price needs to close below to suggest that there's some more danger ahead. On a weekly basis, again, very strong. Price never even got back to its TD9 breakout level. Wow, you can see here the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the only way on this white background chart that I can draw that in is just simply by using lines from the A to B level. And then I just simply copy that and move that to the C point. So you can see the hammer candle that formed out here a few days ago on a daily basis. Price right now is poking its head above that red oscillator and change line. And that's important. But we know the top of the daily profile is at 14,986 level. So that's really the key area uh, to be watching for. I don't have any other signals out here that are worthwhile to spend time on. So we won't. Let's go from there. Let's uh, cover all the markets. Let's take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 next. Let's fire that up and we take a look at its charts out here. What do we see? We see that on a monthly basis, price is holding that oscillator and change line, even after a TD9 count. But you can see just a sideways movement. And the weekly chart really shows a sideways movement. So we know clearly that what we have is a sideways consolidation market inside of the Russell 2000. Price is above its oscillator and change line. That would suggest that it's trying to get back to its recent highs up in the 2290 level. 
Um, what else does Stevie see? Watch 22.26.80 on this move back. If price closes below that, the next level of support would be 22.15 and below that would be 21.85. As far as uh, to the top, where is resistance up at the top? Good question. The top of its daily profile is up at the 22.67 level. If price closes above 22.67, I know it's not on this white background chart here, so I switched over to my black background charts to be able to provide you with that information. So watch 22.67. That would be the number that you'd want to put down on your pad of paper. Let's go take a look at the Dow equity future contract, YM, and then what we'll leave for coming back after the break, we'll go take a look at the gold and silver on its charts, see if there's any additional information. Again, on a monthly basis, the Dow holding this green oscillator and change line, it's pulled back. This was the weakest, but it came back, tested and rejected that breakout level of 33,623. The Dow has a buy the D point pattern out here. Uh, anything else that Stevie can share with you? Not much other than resistance inside the Dow, the YM that is, 34907. Stay road to the We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So uh, one of the uh, one of the more important things to take a look at, especially significant instruments like uh, gold, is understanding how it's trading in all of the major currencies out here. So that's what we've got up on our uh, charts right now on our screen. You've got gold price in dollars on the left hand side, then gold in euros, gold in yen, and then gold in pounds. So in real breakouts, you'll see price continue to rise in all major currencies. They are rising all major currencies as we speak today. Now let's go back over to my eight panel chart here for gold and uh, good news and bad news. So the the uh, bad news is that you may see a, a TD9 count top form between uh, really right now, or we'll call it 9 a.m. That's going to be bar number eight. Now, the pattern cannot complete until 930, but it should be able to do that. I'm looking at the 30 minute time frame chart. So there could be a TD9 count top that occurs between 9 and 10 a.m. And that would suggest some type of retracement or pullback. Now, that's the only time frame that I've got a topping signal. So whatever that high is between now and uh, 10 a.m. Uh, out here, I'm assuming that a TD9 count pattern will fulfill itself. You want to watch that high because the beauty about that pattern is that when it fails, it generates a beautiful continuation signal. In fact, it would be a strong momentum move. So bar number eight, wide ranging bar. Does it matter to me that it's a wide ranging bar? It doesn't. It matters about just simply, you know, why do the TD9s work out here? Uh, if, you know, I'm looking back at gold, uh, the TD9 count bottom that formed. Uh, out here was back in uh, about seven o'clock in the morning. That was on October the fourth. Uh, out there, uh, you know, why do, why does price sometimes stop there? I don't know. I can only just picture that it's kind of like not running a marathon, uh, at least not on a thirty-minute chart. That's for sure. And uh, you've just given it all the gas that you can. And so that you have to rest. And sometimes resting is just to move sideways. Sometimes it's a pullback to test that oscillator and change line, which right now is 1762. That would say it would give up all of its gains. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But what I am suggesting is don't try to jump on the long gold trade right now because a 30 minute chart is suggesting we could see a TD9 count top between now and 10 a.m. Folks, stay tuned. You got Tommy O'Brien. He's up next. Thanks so much for listening. If you're listening during the one o'clock time frame, we'll be back to normal programming hours on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Friday, folks. We'll see you soon.